I'm going to use this software-defined radio to help you visualize digital wireless communications over real channels. And here I have a transmit antenna connected into this port and a receive antenna connected on this port. And as we can see here in the software, we are transmitting at 2.4 gigahertz, right in the middle of the Wi-Fi band. We are also transmitting QAM with four constellation points. And here in the picture, we can see those points. Each one of these points represents a sinusoidal waveform at the appropriate phase. So this point here represents a sinusoid with a phase offset of 45 degrees. This one here, 135. This one here, 225. And this one, 315. So when we send one of these signals, we are representing two bits. Because we have four symbols, they can represent two bits each. So let's have a look and see what's happening at the receiver. Well, here is the receiver, and we can see that those constellation points are slightly perturbed. They're not exactly at the transmitted locations. That means those sinusoidal waveforms are being received with a slightly different amplitude and a slightly different phase. And if I put my hand in between, we can see that the channel is disrupted and those points spread out. And other things we could do to explore what might happen, let's uh, put this antenna down here, then they spread out more. These antennas radiate most effectively out horizontally. Uh, and so when I put this vertical one down horizontally, there's not so much of a uh, coupling between the two. Let's put it back up here. And we can see that tightness of those bunches gets closer together. Uh, at the receiver for this modulation format with this kind of tight clustering at the receiver, we're not going to be making any errors. We can clearly see that the receiver would easily be able to tell whether a point was transmitted up at 45 degrees or at any of the others. We can take a one-dimensional view of this in what's called an eye diagram. And if you'd like to know more about constellation points and more about eye diagrams, I encourage you to look at the other videos on the channel and they're in the show notes for this video. So if we return back to the constellation diagram at the receiver, let's see what happens if we make things a bit more challenging, if we try to send more data. And we can do this by having more constellation points. Let me just go back to the transmitter here. And we're going to stop the transmission and increase from 4 QAM up to 16 QAM. So let's start transmitting this. And we just wait for it to start its transmission. And we'll see the constellation diagram. So here is the constellation diagram for 16 QAM. And in this case, each one of these points represents four bits because there are 16 points. Each one has a unique combination four bits long. So now we are still sending at 125,000 symbols per second. Uh, so now each symbol represents four bits. We've now increased the data rate double compared to the previous one. So let's have a look at the receiver and we need to increase here to 16 for the receiver. And we now can see that the receiver constellation diagram is fairly well packed, uh, still quite close like it was for 4 QAM. Uh, but uh, now if I put my hand in the way, you see that there is that spreading out of the points. And now because the points are closer together now, because we're sending more bits per symbol, uh, there's going to be more of a challenge to tell between those bits. In this case, it's still going to be easy to tell. If we look at the eye diagram, uh, there we are at the sampling times, which is the sampling times here. It's still very clear as to which of the four different levels it is. Don't forget the eye diagram is showing you a one dimensional view. And so if we look back here, there are four levels in the vertical direction and four levels in the horizontal direction. So 16 QAM is still pretty good for this kind of uh, arrangement here with the power that we're sending and, uh, and the receiver noise that we have. So let's try something more. Let's try to go up to 64. So from 16 QAM, let's try 64. So now we set it running 
and uh, let's just see when it uh, starts its uh, implementation. Here we have the 64 constellation points. So now we're sending six bits per symbol. And you can see the constellation points are closer together. So what will we see at the receiver? We should see that it's going to be a more challenging task to tell those points apart. And if the points are roughly spread like they were before, then we're going to see that errors are going to be made. And you can see there's no errors being made if we have 64 QAM and there's no impediments. But as soon as I put my hand in the way, then you can see that the receiver has trouble doing the synchronization. It's actually not doing too bad a job, but you can certainly see there are times where the uh, receiver totally loses track. Uh, and if we look in the eye diagram, it's open for most of the time. Uh, if I put my hand here, it's going to start closing over. Still not too bad actually for 64 QAM. Uh, let's see how it goes for something a bit more challenging even than this. Let's try the next one up. Okay, so we stop this here. Let's go to 128. So we're gonna run this for 128 QAM and see if we're still getting a good signal through the channel uh, and it would, whether it's easy to receive. Uh, in this case, this is what uh, part of the constellation is not showing all of it because actually the data that's getting sent in this particular application is repeating itself. So it's not trying all of the uh, actual constellation points, but let's see what the performance is like. And when we run this with 128, we see that it's not doing a great job at the receiver. Uh, when I put my hand in the way, it's going to get uh, even worse. And here we see some, uh, if I make the antenna come down, it's an even worse, it can't lock onto anything. If I put that up to get a better signal strength, it starts to look like it's about to lock, but it's failing to lock. So this is not surprising, it's more challenging. We're sending more bits per symbol. The symbols have to be closer together. It naturally makes it much more difficult to tell them apart. So just one other thing, let's try, uh, let's look at the effect of the frequency. So here we've been uh, using 2.4 gigahertz. These antennas are dual band for the Wi-Fi, two bands of Wi-Fi, one at 2.4 and the other at 5.4. So let's try these antennas at 5.4 gigahertz. Let's perhaps go back down to 16 QAM. So we're running it here, 16 QAM, wait for it to load and it's going to start transmitting. Here we are. And so this is again our 16 constellation, which is nice and clean at the transmitter. But what are we going to see at the receiver? So here we need to change this to the match the frequency and to again have 16 QAM at the receiver. And we start the receiver operating. And let's see what happens in this case. So in this case, we've gone up to 5.4 gigahertz and we can see that it's more challenging. At 2.4 gigahertz, it was quite straightforward and the receive constellation was very uh, tightly packed around the individual constellation points. But now at 5.4 gigahertz, the, the channel is more challenging. And even for 16 QAM, this is finding it difficult. Uh, if I move the antenna down, you can see there's significant times when the constellation is not clean. And if we look at the eye diagram now, a lot of the times you will see the eye closing over. So here the, the, the eye is open, but now it's closed, open again, and closed again. Every time it closes over, errors are being made. Of course, those errors can be overcome with channel coding, uh, but here in this case, we're looking at just the physical layer of just the modulation. Maybe at 16 QAM, we might be able to overcome these with errors. Uh, so let's see what happens if it's even more challenging. So let's try 32 QAM at this higher frequency. And we're going to run for 32. We just wait for it to load. And uh, here it is, the 32 constellation. And let's look at what's happening at the receiver here. We need to change to 32. Uh, we've got the matched frequency. 
And so now let's look at the receiver for 32QAM at the 5.4 gigahertz and definitely no periods where there's any locking at all. So previously for the 2.4 gigahertz, we started getting this problem at 64 and 128 QAM. Now at 5.4, it's a more challenging environment. There are advantages of 5.4 gigahertz because it's a higher carrier frequency. You can actually have wider bandwidths. There's more bandwidth available, but the challenge of modulation is tougher. And that's what we're seeing here. So hopefully this video has given you more insights into digital communications over wireless channels. And as I said before, if you're interested in more information, check out the show notes. There are a number of videos listed of relevant topics of other videos on the channel. Of course, it helps if you like the video, others can find it more easily and subscribe to the channel for more videos.